Have you ever wondered where you come from? I'm Anthony Adolf, and as a professional genealogist, I spend every day tracing family trees back into the past. Using sources like church registers and gravestones, I can sometimes trace lines back into the 1500s, and other records go back even further. But eventually, the records run out. That's why I've set out on a different journey, in search of our ancient ancestors, right back to the very start. Now, if you could go back in time and ask anyone in 17th century Britain what they thought about their origins, they'd say that they were descended from Noah, who survived the Great Flood, and that he was descended from Adam and Eve, as related in the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis said that the world was created in only six days, and in the 17th century, biblical scholars asserted that this had happened only 6,000 years ago. But in the 18th century, Men of science began to realise that sedimentary rocks, like these at Dry Hill in Kent, must have been built up slowly, layer upon layer, and then tilted dramatically as the Earth's crust moved. That all suggested to them that the history of the world, and therefore our own ancestry, must go back vastly further than anyone had thought before. By the 19th century, scientists had worked out that all life on Earth, even we humans, must have evolved out of earlier, much more simple life forms. And it was Charles Darwin, who lived here at Down House near Bromley in Kent, who came up with the mechanism by which this works. Natural selection through the survival of the fittest. Tiny differences between offspring can result in huge differences between their descendants. Those worst suited to their particular environments die, but those best suited survive, flourish and drive evolution forwards. Now scientists believe that life began 3,500 million years ago in the Earth's primordial seas. So it's out there in the sea, and not with the earliest human ancestor that we can trace using parish registers, that our ancestral story really begins. For millions upon millions of years, our ancestors were single-celled life forms like this. They reproduced by dividing themselves until about 1,200 million years ago when they developed sexual reproduction. These tiny life forms represent two thirds of our entire family tree from the dawn of life down to we humans. But for humans to appear on earth, things needed to change. By about 900 million years ago, some of those single-celled life forms had begun to combine together to create multicellular organisms, like early plants, such as algae and seaweed, and also very early animals. So, by about 555 million years ago, our direct ancestors had evolved into sea worms, a little like this much later one, which we found in Wiltshire, fossilised in chalk. Driven by natural selection, those early sea worms evolved. Some evolved into mollusks, like these mussels, and others evolved into arthropods, like this fossil trilobite, which is about 420 million years old, and whose relatives dominated the ocean floor for millions of years. But some of those sea worms evolved in a different way, developing backbones and fins, and they became fish. By about 400 million years ago, our ancestors had evolved into lobe-finned fish, like this coelacanth. This fossil lobed-finned fish, Pentlandia macroptera, is about 385 million years old, 
and it was found in the Orkney Islands, which are rich in fossils of these ancient ancestors of ours. It's a type of lungfish, and it's so called because it had lungs and it could stick its snout above the water to breathe air. And the reason it's called a lobed finned fish as well is because it had lobed fins, which contained a central lobe of powerful muscles and bones. And you can see one of those lobed fins right there. Those lobed fins were destined to evolve into arms and legs. And if you want to know what our ancient ancestors looked like once they crawled out of the water 300 million years ago, you can come here to Crystal Palace Park in South London. And there they are. They're early amphibians called labyrinthodonts. They are the ancestors of all later amphibians, including frogs and toads. And, more importantly, these creatures are our ancestors. These models are part of a series which Sir Richard Owen, who is a contemporary of Darwin's, commissioned in order to show people what the ancient creatures being discovered through the study of fossils must have looked like. I wonder how many of the people who walk past these models every day realise that they're walking past models of their own great-great-great-grandparents. Labyrinthodonts evolved into reptiles and here our family tree splits into two branches. One of those branches evolved into cynodonts like these. Owen thought that cynodonts had shells like modern turtles but we know now that that's wrong. They probably looked more like big reptilian wolves and it was in such a form that they dominated the land 250 million years ago. But meanwhile, the other branch of the reptile family tree was evolving too. And about 220 million years ago, they began to turn the tables on us, for they became dinosaurs. Dinosaurs dominated the earth for 150 million years, wiping out virtually all of the cynodonts. Only the tiniest cynodonts could survive, and as they did so, they became ever more fast, furry and clever, as they evolved into mammals. We know a lot about these tiny creatures from their teeth. And here are some from an absolutely minuscule cynodont called Morganocodont watsoni. Now Morganocodonts got their name because they were first found in a quarry in Glamorgan in South Wales and that's where these tiny teeth come from. They're about 210 million years old and they may once have belonged in the jaws of a direct ancestor of ours. The teeth were extracted from the rock in which they'd been fossilised by using acetic acid to dissolve the limestone, which left only the tiny little bones and these teeth of the Morganocodont behind. You can imagine those little mammals darting about, trying to avoid being eaten by dinosaurs and hiding from them in their burrows. And it was burrowing that saved us because about 65 million years ago, comets and volcanoes wiped out almost all life on Earth. Most of the dinosaurs became extinct, but some, who developed feathers, evolved into birds. But our ancestors survived in their holes and when the clouds cleared they came out and began to evolve into many, many new types of mammal. Such as megaloceruses like this and paleotheriums and giant sloths. And meanwhile other descendants of those tiny morganocodonts evolved into tree shrews 
and then by about 47 million years ago into primates like this one whose fossil was found a few years ago in Germany and was nicknamed Ida. And from primates we evolved into apes who lived in the forests of Asia and Europe and probably swung through the trees of Britain as well. But as the earth cooled towards the ice age, the apes went south and those who ended up in Africa evolved into chimpanzees and gorillas like this. And meanwhile, other apes in Africa evolved into we humans. And every generation, going back through all those morganocodonts and labyrinthodonts to the very first single-celled life forms, are direct ancestors of us all. I'm Anthony Adolf, a professional genealogist, and I've been so fascinated by the story of our ancient ancestors that I've spent the last 10 years writing this book, In Search of Our Ancient Ancestors, which is published by Pen and Sword and available in all good bookshops and on Amazon. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this short film and that you will enjoy reading In Search of Our Ancient Ancestors.